Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, I'll be going through my top 10 Nintendo Switch indie games, so let's get into it. So first thing to really talk about and jump into with this video is that these are my top 10. Now, there are so many great indie games out there, and obviously I have not played them all, but these are my top 10 that I really enjoy, and if you don't see yours on the list, there's a good chance I maybe just haven't played it. So let me know in the comments below if there are other great indie games I should check out that I don't mention in this video. Also, a lot of these games you can play on other platforms beyond just the Nintendo Switch, so if you don't necessarily have a Switch, uh, you could still play a lot of these games on other different platforms, so be sure to check them out on the other systems you may have and see if they're there as well. Also, this list is not going to be in any specific order. They're just my top 10 indie games on the Nintendo Switch. But without further ado, let's jump into the games. So the first game that I think is probably on a lot of people's list is Dead Cells. And this game you play as a lost soul who is traveling throughout the kingdom, basically from the prison uh, on up to fighting the evil king uh, of the kingdom. And so this game is a fast-paced Metroidvania style game where it also introduces a high replay value and progression system where you play through randomized dungeons and gain better equipment and items as you play along. So you start off, you're not that great, you're not that powerful, so you're going to die a lot, but it's very high fast-paced action in this 2D platformer. And it becomes very addicting as you play because you continue to get better, get better items, get better equipment, make it further in the stages. And again, each time it's completely randomized, so it never really feels like you're playing the same stage over and over and over again because it's different every single time that you play. So even though you may be going through similar areas, it's just as fun the hundredth time through as it was the first time through. So if you haven't played or picked up Dead Cells, I highly recommend checking out this game. The second game on the list is Moonlighter. Now this game is one of my favorites as well. You play as a merchant in a village that runs his shop by day and then dungeon dives by night to actually restock and resupply his shop. So it takes elements from old school Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Zelda games, and then kind of mashes that with a Sims type simulator where you're building a business. And so this game also features that random procedurally generated dungeon landscape where each time you're diving in, it's a new experience where you might be going in a similar area, but the layout is new every time you go in, which really adds to the replay value of this game. It's also very addicting where you're trying to balance the different elements of the game, where you're trying to run a successful shop and business, building up items, setting prices for your items, hiring staff, chasing out thieves out of your building, doing that by day, and then by night diving into the dungeon. It also has a unique element where you can go into the dungeon during the day and your shop might not be open, uh, but it's a little bit easier to get through the dungeon. Or you can go at night where sometimes the treasure is much better, but it's more difficult as well. And so as you create these proceeds from your store, you're going to go and reinvest in new armor, new weapons, but then you can also upgrade your store, increasing your profits when your shop is open during the day. So this game is super addicting, really fun. You go, go through the dungeons. It's new every time. There's huge boss fights that you go through as well. And the story is pretty fun and quirky as well. So I highly recommend checking out Moonlighter as it's one of my favorite indie games on the Switch. Number three on the list is CrossCode. And CrossCode takes an MMORPG concept and turns it into a 2D action RPG puzzle game. So again, it has that similar Super Nintendo Game Boy Advance Zelda type feel, but it also incorporates a lot of action RPG elements and kind of MMORPG elements as well, where you're going on different quests that you can accept, you're meeting other players in the game and playing with them, I mean, they're actually computer players, not real players, right? But it's a simulated MMORPG environment, which is a lot of fun. And the premise of the story is you play as Leah, who has lost all of her memories, and your only chance to restore them is playing through this MMORPG 
because that's where she lost the memories. And so you go through and meet a ton of interesting characters. The story is super compelling, but the gameplay is really great as well. It has some unique puzzle mechanics too, where you also have different elements that you can equip on your character. And there's also a energy ball mechanic where it creates kind of a ricocheting pool ball effect, right? And so it creates unique puzzles where you're switching between elements, you're ricocheting balls off different walls and activating different switches and puzzles. And then the gameplay is very challenging and compelling as well. This also is going to give you a lot of game for your investment where the game itself can take anywhere from 50, 60 hours to complete. And that's not even with going through all of the different side quests and extra end game stuff that's available as well. So if you're looking for a great action RPG, I would highly recommend CrossCode. And it's one of my top Nintendo Switch indie games as well. Number four on my list is River City Girls. And this game is a really fun, quirky, beat em up action RPG. And so it plays along the storyline of the River City Ransom games, which was one of my favorite NES original Nintendo game. And it takes that Double Dragon style beat em up, but then adds RPG elements to it as well. So in this game, you play as Kyoko and Misako, who are two high school girls, and then their boyfriends have been kidnapped. And so you go on this crazy, quirky adventure trying to rescue your kidnapped boyfriends from different gang members and thugs across River City. And so this game is a blast. It's funny. It's quirky. The gameplay is great. It's one of the best speed ups I've played on the Switch. And it's very addicting as well because as you play, you're going to level up. You can get different abilities from the dojo and each character plays different. You have unlockable characters as you get later in the story. And it also has a really cool co-op couch mode. So me and my girlfriend played through this game together and that was a lot of fun as well. So if you have someone that you can play two player with, I highly recommend that aspect of the game too. There's also a lot of cool references to other games in the River City Ransom series, Double Dragon, Super Dodgeball, and more. So again, I recommend checking out this game. It's fun, it's quirky, and it's a great beat em up on the Switch. And that's why it is in one of my top indie games for the Nintendo Switch. Number five on the list is Slay the Spire. And if you've watched some of the videos on my channel before, you've seen that I'm a huge fan of deck building games. It's a style of board game where you start with a basic deck. It's usually 10 cards. And then as you play, you're continually going to be getting new cards to improve your deck, enhance your strategy, and reach some type of goal. So in this game, you're trying to slay the spire, which is basically getting to the top of this great tower, and you're fighting waves of enemies along the way and epic boss fights as well. And in this game, you get to choose from starting out with three characters and you can eventually unlock a fourth character, and they each have unique play styles and decks that you can build. And so there's a ton of replay value to this game. It's super addicting, where again, it's randomly generated paths that you try and climb the spire, and you start with your base deck every time. And so as you play, you're defeating wave after wave of enemies, getting new relics, building a better deck. And again, it's a challenge every time to decide what kind of strategy you want to go with. And then also learning the different strategies of the characters and how you can really optimize their decks and build an effective strategy to get as high as you can in the tower. It's a lot of fun. So if you're new to deck building games or you maybe just want to try one or you're looking for a great video game version of a deck building game, I highly recommend Slay the Spire. And again, that's why it made the list on one of my top indie games on the Nintendo Switch. Number six on my list is Undertale. Now this game has been out for quite a long time and it had a ton of hype with it. Everybody was talking about it. And for that reason, I kind of actually pushed it off and didn't end up playing it for a long time and recently picked up this game. And I really think that it lived up to the hype. The storyline is super compelling, super deep, and it really hit home and made an impact on me. And that was pretty surprising as I didn't think it would be as powerful as it was. But on top of the great storyline, it has great gameplay as well. So this game is an, an RPG, but it has kind of a unique quirkiness to it where you also have kind of an action grid where you're moving the controller, doing different things, moving a little character object. There's a lot of different stuff that goes on in there, but it creates some really unique battles as you play the game. Also, one thing that's cool is the game has multiple different endings depending on how you play. So you can go through, kill everything that you meet, 
or you can use a unique play style where you try and get past enemy encounters and enemy fights by not attacking them. So you need to find out different weaknesses of the characters, say different things to them to get past them, and it creates a pretty cool storyline and different approaches that you can take throughout the game. On top of the great storyline and fun gameplay, the game also has amazing music, and I still find myself listening to the soundtrack again and again. And so if you haven't yet played Undertale, I highly recommend picking up this indie game on the Nintendo Switch. Number seven on the list is The Messenger. And so this game is really reminiscent of old school Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania type games where it's a fast paced action platformer and you play as a ninja from this ninja clan that gets this message and he needs to deliver it to the top of this mountain to really save the world from demons. And along the way you're going to be fighting monsters and other enemies trying to take you out huge demon boss fights and more and it also has a fun quirky adventure and characters that you get to encounter as well. The game also has some RPG elements where you're upgrading the damage you can do, your health bar, as well as sub weapons that you have as you play through. And one thing that I found that was really unique with the game too is that about halfway through it seems to shift genres almost where it starts off this 2D action platformer like I said, similar to a, an old school Ninja Gaiden Castlevania type game, and then actually transforms into a Metroidvania type game. And so this is really cool. I haven't really seen many games like this kind of completely switch genres as you're playing through. One that comes to mind is the Laser Invasion on the original NES where it starts as kind of a first person helicopter battle game and then moves into a first person dungeon crawler shooter. And so I really like that concept of shifting between genres. And so that's a cool element that you'll find in this game as well. So it's a ton of action. It's a lot of fun. And then it combines two great genres of gameplay into one game as well. And I highly recommend checking this game out. Number eight on the list is Knights of Pen and Paper. And this is an older game as well, but you can play it on the Switch. They have uh, the Deluxier Edition, uh, which is cool. But the game itself follows a bunch of players pretty much playing Dungeons and Dragons in their basement. And then the game itself also dives into the world playing Dungeons and Dragons, but then also continually breaks like the fourth wall where you are acting as the players playing the game. So it's a lot of fun. It's a funny, quirky story, and I recommend checking out this game. And for me, it really was reminiscent of the original Final Fantasy game on the NES. The graphics are more 8-bit, 16-bit style, and then the gameplay also is similar to that as well, where you're going to build a party, and it's funny the classes that you get to do, right? So you're playing as like the nerd, the jock, the pizza delivery guy, and random characters like that, and then you put them in the typical Dungeons and Dragon fantasy style job classes. So you've got the mage, the warrior, the wizard and different classes like that, the thief, the rogue. And so you build this team of characters going through this pen and paper world and the story really evolves and expands from there. But it's a lot of fun and really addicting where you're not only building your characters, but you also can build and enhance where you're playing the game in the real world. So you're upgrading your table, you're getting snacks for the people at the party, you're improving your dice and getting random items like that, which can help your gameplay in the gameplay world. And I really found myself enjoying this game. And even when I beat it, I almost wanted to start the game all over again and experience it with a new team of characters that I was playing as. And so if you like old school turn-based RPGs with a new twist, I highly recommend checking out the Knights of Pen and Paper. Number nine on the list is Blossom Tales, The Sleeping King. And so this game takes a lot of inspiration from old school Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Zelda games and builds from that. And so the story itself is actually pretty cool. You are listening in on a story from a grandpa talking to his grandchildren and telling them basically a bedtime story, which unfolds into this world of Blossom Kingdom. And so you play as Lily, a Blossom Knight, and she is tasked with saving the sleeping king who has been put under a spell by his evil brother to overthrow the kingdom and now he's asleep and you follow Lily's journey 
traversing various dungeons and getting ingredients to create a spell to awaken the sleeping king. And so like I said, it follows the formula of old school Zelda games like A Link to the Past and other Game Boy Advance Zelda games. And it's a lot of fun. The story is pretty funny too, because again, the grandpa and the kids are breaking the fourth wall every now and then as you're playing through the game itself and experiencing that story. The game isn't too terribly difficult, so it could be a great introduction to someone's first experience in these type of Zelda-like games. But a lot of the puzzles were also challenging as well, so I never really felt like I was going to lose you have a lot of items that can keep you live and keep you going but it was a fun experience and if you need to fulfill that need of playing an old school zelda type game i highly recommend checking out blossom tales on the switch number 10 on the list is blazing chrome so this game follows the story of resistance fighters in a post-apocalyptic world where evil ai robots have taken over the world and the last survivors of humanity are barely holding on. And so think of Terminator meets Contra. And so this is a run and gun shooter where you play as one or two characters running through with crazy souped up guns and grenades and weapons, blasting everything that comes on the screen, fighting wave after wave of enemies, and then encountering epic boss fights as well. This game is super fast paced. It's very difficult and challenging. So you're going to get a lot of replay out of this game, playing through the various difficulties. You start off with a couple characters you can play as, but as you play, you can unlock others as well, increasing the replay value further. It also has a local co-op two-player mode, which is a lot of fun. Again, me and my girlfriend played through this game and it was really cool, reminiscent of old school Contra games but then also mashes in some other genres as well. So there's speeder bike type scenes, which really reminded me of the original Battletoads. And there's also more 3D trench runs in the game as well, which reminded me of old school Return of the Jedi on the Super Nintendo. So the gameplay is a lot of fun. It's really fast paced, challenging. And I think the game has a lot of replay value as well. So if you're looking for a fun, running gun shooter game, I would recommend checking out Blazing Chrome on Nintendo Switch. But again, guys, that wraps up my top 10 list of Nintendo Switch indie games. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. Let me know in the comments below if there's other indie games I should check out. And if you enjoy these top 10 lists, let me know in the comments below as well for some other top 10 lists I should make. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on those bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out here. And if you'd like to help us support the channel, pick out content and more, consider becoming a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and let's plays we do on the channel, you can follow us over at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.